This video is brought to you by my wonderful members and Super Chat sponsors. Click the Join button to become a member. This story has been pulled from the ancient archives of my channel, dusted off and completely rewritten to provide the quality of experience you've come to expect in the roughly five years since we last discussed it. I hope you enjoy my reimagining of this haunting tale. Dear Mr. X, it's me, your fellow dreamer, Selena. I have an interesting story for you. When I was younger, around elementary school age, my family lived in a small two-story home near the outskirts of Omaha, Nebraska. Before I go on, I sort of have to describe the layout of the property. If you were standing out in front, facing the house, you would see a small front lawn with nothing really going on as far as landscaping. There was a single lonely streetlight off to the left of the house, and my room was on the second floor, far right side, kind of sitting in the house's shadow. A quick side note before I explain what I saw. The kids at my school used to say that my eyes turned red whenever I got angry, so they gave me a pretty hurtful nickname. One day, I got home from school and saw it written with markers on my bedroom window, up on the second floor. I guess some of the older kids tagged it before I got there. Big jagged letters scrawled out the word, DEMON, across the glass. I couldn't believe someone went to so much trouble just to make me feel like even more of an outcast. They actually had to use a ladder we kept in the backyard of the house. It hadn't been moved in ages and had to be ripped out of the weeds and dirt that had covered it over time. They put it back before I got home that day, but left clear signs against the wall below my window showing that it was used. Patches of dirt and things like that. I was so mad that I threw a rock and shattered the window. My father had to cover it with a garbage bag and some duct tape. Anyway, the real story I want to share happened later that year during the summer. It was close to midnight when I got up to go to the bathroom. Even though it was so late, and I was so young, I was wide awake and full of energy. I decided to be sneaky and play some video games in my room instead of go back to sleep. About an hour later, around 1am, out of nowhere, I heard a faint scream coming from outside my window. The only reason I was able to hear it was the fact that I had the volume turned down, almost at the lowest setting. I could tell it was the voice of a woman. A little scared, but extremely curious, I carefully ran downstairs to look out the living room window. It wasn't until I got all the way downstairs that I realized the whole room was somehow bathed in this deep, almost blood-red hue of light. As I surveyed the familiar, yet surreal environment, it felt like an alien world, despite the fact that it was full of furniture and items that I saw and enjoyed every day. I looked around, somewhat confused. After a few seconds, I noticed that the main window was covered. I couldn't see outside. I surveyed the whole area within my view and realized that all the windows were covered, not just that one. I walked up to the living room window. As I examined it, I saw something that made my stomach turn. The window was basically plastered with some kind of paper-like material that seemed to be soaked in red liquid. I ran back up to my room intending to hide. When I got there, I noticed that the area near the top of my window, the part that wasn't broken, was clear. The bloody covering wasn't there. I carefully climbed up on the sill peering through the unbroken part of the window. Something about the situation made me feel the need to be quiet so as not to be noticed. Noticed by what, exactly? I had no idea at the time. As I looked around, my eyes wandered over to the area of the lonely streetlight. When they settled on the area underneath it, the lone circle of light in the darkness outside, I saw the shape of a man crouching, hunching over an ambiguous form. I squinted my eyes to see what he was on top of, when my heart dropped. I saw the legs of a woman who lay motionless on the ground. The man had on an orange, short-sleeved shirt and what appeared to be jeans, but the girl was dressed in a sort of business attire, a long-sleeved, collared white shirt with a black skirt 
and stockings which initially made her figure a bit hard to make out. I saw a streak of blue in her otherwise brown hair, and it was spread out on the pavement below. I thought my blood would freeze solid when the man suddenly looked up, almost in my direction. His face was so pale that it seemed to glow against the darkness around him, a dark red smeared across his mouth and face. As you might imagine, that's when I realized I was looking at a vampire. As the shock and fear began to build in my mind, the man turned his head again, this time directly toward me. His face was clearly startled. He glared at me before sweeping the girl up from the ground and dashing away with such incredible speed, I could hardly believe what I was seeing. His movements seemed unnatural, even to my young mind. I went back downstairs after he left and saw that the windows were back to normal. There was no residue or pieces of whatever was blocking them before. The next day, I went over to the spot where the attack had occurred. I saw drops of blood on the pavement, along with a silver necklace. For some reason, I decided to take the necklace and clean it up. I still have it to this day, as you can see by the picture I sent you in my email. The crazy thing is, following the incident, I began having nightmares of my hands being drenched in blood. Those soon evolved into more intense dreams, where everything in my house would be spattered with blood my bed, the floor, the ceiling, the walls. It was terrifying, like I was living in a slaughterhouse. A few days after the nightmare started, I woke up and had some sort of bite mark on my arm. The bite was deep enough that it drew blood. I just decided to shower and cover it up, doing my best to keep it hidden because I knew no one would believe me, and I already had a reputation for being a quote-unquote demon at my school. On top of all that, I knew my mother would have thought the injury was something I did to myself, and I just didn't want the trouble. Looking back, I realize it was totally stupid not to tell anyone about what I saw, not to mention bringing a necklace from a possible victim into my home. To this day, I don't know for sure what I saw. I was very young, but in my heart, I truly believe that man was a real vampire. Thank you for listening. Sincerely, Selena. Alright, so I'll get into my thoughts and then we will check out what the dreamers listening to the live show have to say. First of all, I am probably planning to release this episode around Halloween time, so if I did do that, happy Halloween. If not, come back to this video on Halloween and listen again. Do me that little favor. And let me know you're watching it on Halloween, that would make my day. It's a very fitting theme, if you ask me. So, here we go. Now, I used to live in Omaha, unbeknownst to many of you, my dear dreamers. Uh, the old school folks might have heard this before. Something about the description of Selena's encounter took on an air of extra creepiness for me because of my familiarity with the area in which the events are said to have taken place. You'd be surprised at how much it elevates the experience of listening to a story when you have a nuanced appreciation for things like the atmosphere, the temperature during that time of year, the sights, sounds, and smells of the area where the story is happening. So when I heard this, being that it was one of the rare occasions I'm telling a story that took place somewhere I was familiar with, I was really able to empathize with all the other dreamers that tell me they leave comments saying, hey, this story happened in my own hometown, for example. It's a really interesting phenomenon, I find. Also pretty rare. But I guess the bigger the audience, the more chances that's going to happen. So about the story itself, one thing that has always fascinated me was the element of the blood red paper-like covering that obscured all the windows on the first floor of, of Selena's house. It made me wonder what classic vampire ability or attribute might have been at play in those moments. Imagine the, the scene of going downstairs and your entire house is bathed in a blood red light, something you've never seen before. It must be extremely unsettling. Of course, we know this could have simply been the fever dreams of a young child, but as the real dreamers know, 
on this channel, we explore even the most far out possibilities, suspending our disbelief, like I said earlier, and indulging ourselves in these fantastic stories. In all my research in vampires and their ways, I've never heard of something that physically blocked the view of what the vampire was doing. Something spontaneously coming up and attaching itself temporarily to windows, for example. Never heard of it before. So I wonder, then, if that creature was trying to be... If, if it was trying to be so stealthy that he would magically paper over the windows in a neighborhood, why would he then choose to commit those atrocities directly under the light of a the only street lamp on the road. Very strange uh, set of decisions there, but I mean, I suppose we'll never know. I myself have seen many people who would fancy themselves aligned with the world of night creatures, but I've never come across compelling evidence myself personally. The storyteller in me, though, simply must insist that I haven't yet stumbled into the right dark corner of the world to see what really lies hidden in the shadows. Whispers of blood-sucking monsters have been uttered throughout all kinds of texts and mediums across all of human history. In my opinion, these time-tested myths might contain some sort of grain of truth. So, my friend, what did you think about this story? I have a couple of questions for you down in the comments. Do you think that the being Selena saw could have really been a vampire. What do you think about the red paper that covered the windows? Have you ever heard of such a thing? Do you think there may be a link between the encounter and Selena's mean-spirited nickname where the children at school called her a demon? Something about the situation tells me there may be a link there somewhere. Also, what do you feel about dreams of blood? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Now, it's time to open up the floor for the dreamers to weigh in. Remember, if you want a chance at your question or comment showing up in a future video, turn on notifications so you can catch the live reading and discussion. You could even sponsor a video with a super chat from there. Alright, so let's see what the dreamers had to say. Alright, so got a lot of amazing, thought-provoking content from the comments with the live uh, listeners here. Very much appreciated. That is what elevates this show to something beyond what I could do on my own. Having the unique perspectives and ideas of the people that care enough about my work to come in and listen when they have a chance. You know, it's, it's not always doable, but it's always appreciated. So, Sleepy says... Dreaming of blood could mean that she may be forever connected with whatever she encountered. Scary thought. Scary thought indeed, Sleepy. I would hate to imagine, especially the fact that one thing that kind of hit me was her hands were spattered with blood in the beginning when she first started dreaming about this. But then later, everything around her began to be covered in blood, which is uh, seems to be Indica indicative of some sort of progression of whatever was happening with her and uh, that's definitely uh, something I hope is not the case I, I should I will send her an email and uh, check up on our friend Selena see how she's been over the past few years I think I I think I might have messaged her a couple of years ago just to check on her but um, it's definitely overdue so Brett says the person still having the necklace is interesting and he wonders why the child might have just been bitten once. Yeah, that is a good question because in my mind it almost seems like that that uh, bite it was almost like a message. I don't know if it's a it it it's, uh, seems like in the intervening years, Selena has grown up normally and is not claiming to have any kind of strange vampiric qualities about her life. So, maybe it was just whatever happened to her. It was just uh, some sort of warning or message. I'm not sure. Mary C. says, I'd say just because they're young doesn't take away from the credibility. Most parents won't let their kids see horror movies with that level of blood, so it would be a pretty vivid memory. I agree. If someone's, you know, like six years old, I would imagine they haven't seen any graphic 
murders perpetrated by vampires on TV or in movies. But then again, I mean, I saw, I'm pretty sure I saw Freddy Krueger at some point in passing, walking through maybe one of my aunts or something was watching it, and I had some serious nightmares from that, so who knows, but there's certain, under certain circumstances, I do believe a, ch a child's testimony should be taken somewhat seriously, but that's not really a, it's not really a big deal breaker for this channel. Anyway, still a very interesting story. Unchained Soul says, sounds like she has an interesting genetic quirk. Yeah, that I wonder about because it seems like the only, the only reference to her eyes turning red is a, uh, is her mentioning that kids said that about her. It wasn't something that she identified with on her own. So I, I wonder, I wonder if that's really something that happened because I believe that is possible just in the realm of the mundane world. It is possible for someone to have a condition that where their eyes turn red. I, I could imagine. I've heard of it before is what I'm saying. So Tariko says, um, perhaps the necklace was left behind because the vampire could not touch it, which is a pretty interesting idea. I don't know how the vampire would have gotten it off. Maybe, maybe, uh, he used the, the skirt of his, of his shirt or so, or his jacket or something like that to rip it off without touching it. But it's an interesting idea to think that that might have been left behind because the vampire is like, yeah, I, I need to go, but I don't want to deal with this silver thing because that, that burns. Another great observation by the dreamers. Dark Phoenix says, uh, why do her eyes change to red? Was she bitten by a vampire before? It's another, another really interesting little tidbit. It almost points to a broader story that might go beyond what I was told in the original email when Selena reached out to me. Imagine a that she has some sort of genetic trait of vampirism or something has happened to her or maybe passed down to her that and this is we're going into into uh, super crazy town right now, but screw it and let's just go. Imagine Selena's parents are somehow affiliated. They have some sort of vampiritic qualities to them or an immunity to vampirism, maybe some kind of genetic quirk, like someone said earlier. And maybe that's why when she was bitten, nothing happened to her. Super interesting idea to think about it. It kind of makes me want to write a little story or something, a little, a little short blurb about it just to get it out of my head. Very, see, I, I love this type of stimulation mentally. It's awesome. Ambar says, Blood in dreams can represent facing your fears or dealing with guilt. And I wonder what that would be for her, for, for Selena in this case. I would imagine she probably feels a little guilty for not saying anything when she saw a woman being uh, possibly hurt and picking up the necklace and taking it inside and washing it off. I'm not sure what her what her intentions were with that if she just really wanted the necklace and saw that as her only opportunity to get one or if she had something else on her mind. I'm not sure. I should probably have asked her that, but if this is 5 years ago that I received the email, so I, I'm not sure I'm not sure uh what to do there. But yeah, there could have very well been some some guilt hidden amongst her thoughts there. Very interesting stuff. Thank you all so much for your contribution and and giving me more to talk about and more to think about with this story. I always, this is my favorite part of every video that I do. So thank you all very much, especially the live listeners. And I'll be looking forward to more comments from you all listening after the fact when the whole video is produced. And, uh, I would love to see if you all have any additional conversation starters about this. So, before we close out the video, I'm going to go to the dreamers one more time and see if we could find a good code word to end this and finish strong. Stand by one sec. Alright, so user Dark Phoenix suggested the fantastic code word, red eyes. So if you're listening to this part of the video, 
you're exactly the type of dreamer I'm looking for. Type the words red eyes into your comment down below. Be creative with it so I can see you. Take care, my friends. Until next time. All right. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, don't forget to like and share. If you made it to the very end, you're exactly the kind of subscriber I'm looking for. Don't forget to turn on those notifications. That way, you can catch the live show and discuss the stories with me. Your input might even appear in my next video. Last thing, if you heard a code word after the story, type it in a comment down below so I know who the real dreamers are. Take care, my friend. Until next time.